Slob Defense, Modern, Alapin Variation, Czech, Dutch, Main Line, 9, NBD 710.E4 BG6. Balanced neither player ever had an advantage. That game was pretty competitive. Both players had an amazing opening. It was an incredible middle game by both players. The Reedy is a less common but flexible opening that controls the center with the knight before committing a pawn. D5 occupies the center and controls the E4 and C4 squares. The D4 square controls the E5 and C5 squares and establishes a solid center. By doing this, a knight moves out of its beginning square and into the action. C4 gains space on the queen side, prepares to develop the knight to C3, and invites black to give up control of the E4 square after Dx C4. When C6 is played, the d5 pawn is supported and the queen can grow on the queen side. And c3 attacks the d5 square and starts to fight for the e4 square. Dx c4 captures the c4 pawn and opens up the center. A4 stops the b7 b5 advance, which would have allowed black to keep the c4 pawn. Bf5 develops the bishop and controls the e4 square. The d4 pawn is supported by e3 and the light squared bishop can attack the c4 piece. e6 supports the bishop on f5, controls the d5 square and allows the dark squared bishop to develop. bx c4 develops the bishop, captures the c4 pawn and prepares castling. This develops a knight from its starting square, activating it. By growing a queen from its beginning square, this activates the queen. That's good. This pins the other side's knight to the king, rendering it immobile. It is ideal. Castling gets the king to a safer square, out of the center of the board, while also developing a rook. Castling king's side tends to be safer because the king is further from the center. This threatens to kick a bishop. Castling gets the king to a safer square, out of the center of the board, while also developing a rook. Castling to the same side of the board as the opponent avoids some of the attacking associated with opposite side castling. e4 attacks the bishop and gains space in the center. bg6 attacks the white pawn on e4. A pawn kicks the opposing knight, forcing it to move or risk being captured. This offers an equal trade of pieces. It is the last book move. This exchange is fair. That's good. Recaptures. It is ideal. This suggests exchanging items of equivalent value. The pawns in front of the king could potentially double as a result. It is ideal. This keeps the material balance in check with good commerce. It is ideal. Backs off. It is ideal. This is not the best approach. It is incorrect. The rooks are linked by this, making it easier for them to work together in the future. It is ideal. The rook is now on an open file, which helps control squares across the board. It is quite good. While not a mistake, that is also not the wisest course of action. That's good. This deters an assault on a pawn that is weak. It is ideal. That is a logical response. It is quite good. A pawn kicks the opposing queen, forcing her to move or risk being captured. It is ideal. The queen is now on a square that is more secure. It is ideal. Not the finest, this. It is incorrect. What I would have advised is that. It is ideal. Among the best actions. It is quite good. When the queen retreats, this attack wins a tempo. It is quite good. This provides an equal exchange of parts. It is ideal. There were worse moves, but also something much better. It is an inaccuracy. Balanced neither player ever had an advantage. That game was pretty competitive. Both players had an amazing opening. It was an incredible middle game by both players. This permits the opponent to develop a piece while also winning a tempo on a queen. It is an inaccuracy. Balanced neither player ever had an advantage. That game was pretty competitive. Both players had an amazing opening. It was an incredible middle game by both players.